pack the lib. Um, I am going to start by presenting my screen um, and then I'm going to share. So one second. Okay, I am stuck. Of course, it's fine. Never fear team. All right, here we go. I'm going to share screen. Who can share when someone else is sharing? Um, I don't know if it's letting me, oh, here we go. Okay, we're making progress. All right. Can I get a thumbs up from anyone who can see my screen right now and make sure that I'm sharing the right one? Okay, awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, this workshop is Flask 101, how to build your first web application with Python Flask. So this workshop is gonna be about 30 minutes long. Hopefully I can stick to the um, expected agenda. We have four main sections to this. The first five minutes are going to be a project um, demo. So I'm gonna go through and run the code that I will help you build throughout this 30 minutes and show you like what the, our end result will look like and how it will work. The next five minutes will be a little bit of a dive into what Flask actually is. And then I'm gonna spend 15 minutes going more deep into what the structure of a Flask app looks like and what the different parts of it um, are responsible for and which parts you need or like maybe don't need. And then finally, I will give you access to the sample code. So that way, if you are interested in Flask and want to use it for your hack during this hackathon, feel free to start with this as kind of a way to like bootstrap that and change it to make it whatever you want it to be. So a special note before I move on, this workshop is focused on Jinja templating and not on API design. Those are both um, more advanced concepts. So if those are the first time you're hearing those terms, no need to panic. Um, but if, if you happen to be familiar with it and you're like super excited to learn more about API design, just wanted to give you a disclaimer. That's not what I'm gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna be focusing more on the HTML side. Okay. Great, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Madeline Nelson. You can, all can feel free to call me Madeline. I'm a platform software engineer at a company called Sprout Social. And like we were talking about a few minutes ago, platform really just means backend. So at the company I work at, Sprout Social, I write code for my job. And most of the code I write is in Python and Java. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. Um, I graduated from Notre Dame in 2017. So, so I've been working as a software engineer for, for almost four years and I'm based out of Chicago, Illinois. Some other fun facts about me while we're on this page. Um, I volunteer with Girls Who Code, highly recommend that organization. They have so many great programs and I also play the trumpet. So I don't know if any other musicians are out there but it's a good time. Great, okay, so now I'm going to do this demo. All right, let me figure out how to do this team. I appreciate your patience because I'm gonna share a different screen. Um, okay, so can you see, I don't have any thumbs. Can someone give me a thumbs up if you can see my green desktop right now? Thank well, you, now Can. you can only see the slides, uh, Ms. Nelson. Oh, you can't, oh, I'm sharing the wrong one. All right, thank you for your patience, here we go. Share screen. Oh, it won't work on what I'm doing right there. Um, okay, I want to be able to share my entire screen, and it's not letting me do that. Whiteboard terminal. Um, okay, I guess that's fine. Okay, I'm going to share this one first. So. This is a terminal. I've pulled up a command prompt. Again, if this is the first time you're seeing this ever, don't, no need to panic, it's okay. Um, this is where I will type some commands and tell the computer what I want it to do. So right now I am going to run a command called flask run. I'm gonna hit enter. And then I see, oh, okay, this is fine. I see in here, there's some output looks good. Um, what I really care about is this bottom line right here, running on HTTP 127.001.5000. Huh, whatever that is. So I am going to copy that. And okay, let's see if I can do this. 
I am going to share this other window again. Oh, I can share multiple. Oh, look at that. All right, sorry. I think Zoom just updated and I'm trying to figure out how to do things at once. Okay. Um, can you see my Chrome? Yep, now we can see the whole desktop screen. Sweet, thanks. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> it's hard to know what y'all are seeing. Okay, great. So what happened here is I just typed in or copy pasted um, 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. And as you can see, my website appeared here. So this is the sample code or um, the sample web application that I'm gonna show you how to make today. Okay, so let's explore for a minute. Flask Animal Shelter. So um, as I'm sure many of you are familiar with, animal shelters have had a lot of changes during COVID. Um, so that's why I thought of making this for the sample code. This is a fictional animal shelter. The homepage just says this is a really great animal shelter. So a little empty right now. I clicked on the dogs tab in the nav bar here. And you can scroll down and see, again, fictional dogs. Here's one named Spot, Boston Terrier, age two. Another pug and a golden retriever. So again, this is just a sample code with um, dummy data in here right now. So um, if it was a real animal shelter, I'm sure there'd be many more, but we have the ability to add another dog here. So why don't, why don't we do that now? Let's call it Springles. And we um, probably uh, Maltese, age four. And then I'm gonna hit submit and sprinkles. Here we go. Here's our entry for our other dog. So there's one more um, aspect to this application that's pretty cool. You can click on the random dog tab up here and it will randomly choose a dog for you. So that's pretty much it. Um, this is what we are going to be making today. Great. Well, really what I'm going to be giving you with the sample code. So another fun thing to note here, assuming you can see this, in our um, terminal where I ran Flask Run, you can see that there's a lot of different requests being made here. So every time I do something, oop, didn't mean to expand that. Every time I do something over here, so if I click random dog, you get another line here. So it's just, it's a kind of cool way to see how this server works um, behind the scenes. So yeah, that's um, that's what we're going to be making. All right, um, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat. I don't see it now, but if you have any questions, feel free to put them in there and we'll have time at the end too. Cool, so what is Flask? Okay, let's talk about web frameworks for a minute. So why do we need web frameworks? Um, well, they provide a structure for building big and complex web applications. So some of you, um, for some of you, this might be the first time you've made any kind of website and that's perfectly okay. And it's, it's a really fun um, area to explore. What I'm showing you here is a little more advanced way to make a website other than using just plain old HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So at a hackathon, you might encounter a few different kinds of website hacks. They'll be structured in different ways. So I made a little chart here to explain what these different kinds are. There's no need to like memorize this. I'm just trying to give you a sense for what Flask is used for and why you might choose to use it if you want to. So for hack number one on the left over here, you can see that you can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, three different programming languages all, that all work together really nicely to build a front-end only website. It's pretty simple. Um, if this is your first time building a website, I would recommend doing that. Hack number two is a little more advanced. And for this kind of hack, you use a web framework like Flask to encompass your HTML, CSS, and if you have any JavaScript, um, to bundle that up nicely into a web application that's both front end and back end. Hack number three is a little different. 
it's kind of similar to hack number one where you don't have any back end. Um, you only do front end using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you encompass that in a front end web framework like React. And finally, um, hack number four is more advanced. This is kind of what you would see generally at a company that makes web applications with software engineers, kind of like the company I work for, um, where you have separate applications for your front end and your back end. And those applications talk to each other through what's called an API, but we're not gonna worry about that. So in the hack number four, you might use Flask or a company might choose to use Flask for their back end application. There's lots of different options, um, pros and cons to using Flask or Django or other different kinds of frameworks. And I'm not here to um, go into too much detail about that. But what I want you to take away here is that I'm gonna be showing you how to make a web application that uses a stack like hack number two. So hopefully that helps clarify things a little bit. All right, so now that we've looked at the different options, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why you might use Flask for your front end. So it could be a good fit for your project's front end if, if you fit these three criteria or really any of them. Number one, your app is small and simple. So for a hackathon, um, this is generally the case. So Flask could be a really good fit for this. The second one is that you need to build the first version of a project super quickly and you just want to get started right away. Flask could be helpful for that. And finally, if you're familiar with Python um, and you're not as familiar with JavaScript and you really wanted to use Python to make your website, then this is one way that you could do that. And another small disclaimer, if you choose to do something that's not Flask for your project's front end, that is totally okay. You could use Flask to build a backend only application and a totally different tool for your front end. So there's lots of different ways you could do this. There isn't one way that's always better. It really just depends on your situation. Usually during a hackathon, Flask is a good option. All right, that was fun. I'm gonna do a quick time check. It's 2.18 in my time zone. So it looks like we're doing pretty well on time. Um, next, I'm gonna talk about the structure of a Flask app. So now that we know what our demo application looks like, like what the end result is going to be, and we know kind of why you might choose Flask, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about like what each of the parts really does. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so on the right, you can see a little bit of a pixelated screenshot of a file hierarchy of this sample code. So, if this is the first time you're seeing anything like this, um, again, it's oh, totally okay. I know this is this might be new if you've never taken um, a web development class before, um, but this is kind of similar to what you might find in a Finder, the Finder tool in on whatever computer you're using, where you go through files and there are folders that have files in them. And there's folders and folders and folders. That is basically called a file hierarchy. Um, so on the right, you can see what the file hierarchy of our application is. <laughs> I like this GIF a lot of the dogs. They're like, what? What are you talking about? Hopefully that um, helps everyone realize that you, you do not have to memorize any of this. Um, it's okay to learn one step at a time. So for our first step, let's focus on understanding the role of my env. And you can see I have an arrow to it right here, my env and requirements.txt. All right, so Python, just like any kind of software there is out there, has different versions. And for this particular project, we're using Python version 3.6. So it's a pretty new version of Python. It's not like the newest, but pretty modern here, which is good. In Python development, Virtual environments are used to organize different packages, basically a collection of libraries needed for different projects. So listed below, I have um, a few different commands that you might run if you're in a Linux or a Mac um, envir development environment. Um, and this is how you could create, activate, and deactivate your virtual environment. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. I understand that this might be um, kind of advanced, so I don't want to overwhelm any participants we have here. Um, but basically, you can think about it as like each project you work on at a time needs different libraries in order to make it work. So one project might need these three and another project might need two. Oh, hello, this is my cat. Another project might need two of those, but then another one or another one might need seven totally different libraries. So if you're working on a bunch of projects at the same time, you need a way to kind of like organize where all those packages go. And virtual environments is a way for you to do that. So in this case, my env is the name of my virtual environment. And this is how I turn it on. I run on this command source my env bin activate. And then I deactivate using this. So I'm happy to answer any more questions at the end about virtual environments. You don't have to memorize this. I just wanted to let you know that they exist and they're helpful. All right, the next part I wanna talk about is packages. So pip is a package manager for Python projects. So if any of you have been in a computer science class before, you might've used tools like NPM, apt-get, brew. There are a lot of, lots of package managers out there for different I don't know, aspects of code, but pip is used specifically for Python projects. So now that we've talked about that, there's a command that you can run that's pip install flask, and that installs that one specific package. So that's basically all you need to get your environment for this flask application up and ready to go. Um, but as a pro tip, I've included this bottom section of the slide as well, just to help um, reinforce good habits. So say again, you're working on some Python project and instead of just this one package, you want like all these different packages. So you want seven packages. Instead of running pip install flask, pip install pandas or whatever, pip install you know, pillow, whatever it is, all of these different packages, one by one by one, that can get kind of annoying, right? And as humans, I don't, we don't like being annoyed. We wanna do things efficiently. So one way you could do this to make this a little quicker and easier to keep track of is you use a requirements.txt file. And in that file, you basically list all those packages that you want installed. And you just have to run this one thing once and then you're good to go. So pro tip, that's why I have requirements.txt in this project so that you can run this one command and then have any packages that you need installed. Okay, great. That was a lot, I'm talking a lot. We have covered so far requirements.txt and my env, which is our virtual environment. And next I'm gonna talk about app.py. So as the slide says, app.py is like the main part of your app, your Flask application. It's the guts of the Flask app. So if you're only paying attention to part of this, which again, is totally okay, app.py is the part you wanna pay attention to. So on the right, I have a screenshot from, or a screenshot of a really, really, really simple Flask application. That's it. Like the one, two, three, four, five, six lines you see on the right is the entire application. So um, again, if you've written code before, you'll probably say, wow, that looks really short. Like usually we have hundreds of lines, but in this particular example, to prove a point, um, I made a really, really small application. And I will talk about what each of these, the parts on the right do. So unfortunately I do not have line numbers here. I should have included that in the screenshot, my bad. Um, on line number one, you can imagine, this is line number one, that you are importing the Flask class. So that's what that line is doing. For number two, you're creating an instance of your Flask app. That would, that's how you would write that. Um, this is just setting a setting on the app, which is saying we wanna run it in debug mode. So that's cool. Um, and then, for the next, for this part right here, where we use app 
route, which is called a decorator in Python. If you see the at symbol like that used in front of a function, that's called a decorator. Um, and we're telling Flask which URL to trigger when we, or which URL, yeah, which URL should trigger our index function. So in Python here, this is a function, def index. We have a room to add some parameters if we want, but we don't actually have any. So we're just gonna leave that empty. And then a colon to say, this is where our function starts. This is a super simple function. We're just returning something right away, um, but that's a function. And by writing, you know, the at sign app.route, putting a forward slash here in single quotes and then listing the get method, that's how we say, hey, Flask, I want you to say, if anyone goes to a browser, they go to my server, they put a forward slash, I want you to run index.html. That's what that is saying. So if that URL is called, then we can look at this line, we render the template called index.html. So a template, um, I know this is probably a lot of new vocab for everyone, but a template is basically the structure that in this context is the structure that you would use as like the basis of your HTML on the page. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll go into that a little more. It's basically saying like, this is what I want you to put on the page. Cool. <laughs> so I did uh, part of this earlier as the demo, um, but when you run this for the first time um, in your local environment, you first want to export this environment variable. You want to run this command export flat ask app equals app.py or whatever your app.py file is called. If it's called like my app.py, that's totally fine. Sorry team, I should have put my cat in the other room. Um, you just wanna adjust that command to be whatever name of the file that you have. So the more important part that you should pay attention to is this flask run. That's how you actually run your application. So if you have your code um, sitting on your computer, which is great, and you're like, okay, cool, but like, how do I make the website appear? You go in your terminal and you run flask run, and then you can see in a browser, your application is running. More proof that your application is running is you, you can see in the command prompt, if it's a terminal command prompt, whatever it is, um, you'll be able to see the output on the bottom here. So it says, this is what we saw in our demo earlier, serving flask app app.py, something about the environment, it's different, but depending on what your settings are. And then finally, the part that we really care about is running on HTTP 127.001.5000. So, yep, that's how you run it. Great. Um, now we've gone over app.py. So the next part that I wanna talk about is going into templates a little bit more. And that's where that HTML and Jinja lives, like I mentioned earlier. So HTML files, which are also known as templates, um, they consist of lots of tags and they're basically the structure of the web page. And I think most people, um, if they do any coding in school, they might start with HTML. It's a really um, beginner friendly um, language to start with. And the thing is that like HTML on its own doesn't really do that much. So you need other languages to kind, of, to kind of plug in with it to add logic and like make your website dynamic. So Jinja can in a way serve that purpose when we're using Flask. Jinja is a web template engine for Python and it, it does support simple logic like loops and if statements. So if you look at the screenshot below, um, hopefully this will help clarify the concept of, of a web template engine um, if you're already familiar with HTML. So here you can see that we have what looks like a pretty normal HTML tag. We have an image tag. We have some an H3 header tag, P tag, some horizontal row break thing. But then there's also some other weird logic in here, right? We have this for dog and dogs, and then we have an end for. We also have this weird thing going on here, which is a source attribute and then a URL for. Um, so that's a little bit different than normal HTML. 
And we also have um, a little bit of interpolation here. So that's a way for us to insert a variable value into this H3 tag. So it's a little different than normal HTML. It definitely takes a little bit of like perseverance and learning to get used to. Um, but luckily there's a lot of documentation online where you can learn like how to use Jinja to make your HTML dynamic using Flask. Cool, that was fun. So that's what you might um, see in templates. And then let's finally go over static. So um, static is another directory, which is another word for folder. And that's where your CSS, JavaScript, and any images will live for your website. So your static directory contains all the files that are static, which basically means they don't change, unlike HTML templates, which do change, which is why they're in a different folder. So there's a few different kinds of files that you might find in your static directory. Um, CSS, which is used for website styling. Think things like changing colors and fonts and adding spacing and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, all of that lives under static styles. So it's under a subdirectory of static. JavaScript um, can also make your website dynamic and any scripts, JavaScript scripts that you have would be under static and then scripts subdirectory. Images similarly would live under static and then media. If you have any video files or audio files or any other kind of media, you could also put it there. Um, but in this case, I'm just using image files. So there's one little trick to remember. In order to access files from within your template, so say you're in your HTML file and you're like, okay, I want to include this image tag, but you can't just use like a normal um, image tag for it. You need to do it a little bit fancier. Um, you would do that using this URL for syntax. And that's in order to help Flask know where exactly to look to get that file that you need in the template. So it's a little tricky. I know when I was first working with Flask, I forgot that a few times. I was like, why isn't Flask finding my image? But just remember um, your URL for um, is the way that you can do that. All right, that was fun. So we went through um, the purpose of static and we basically covered the entire Flask app file structure. So good job team. Pat yourself on the back, we survived. Um, next, I am going to give you access to the sample code. So the sample code that I used during this presentation lives on my GitHub account. So for those of you who might not be familiar with GitHub, it's basically a, um, a place where software developers, software engineers can store their code in a way that they can like share it with other people, make edits to it, um, and copy different versions, do all sorts of cool stuff. So I have my account here and that is a link to the code that I showed you. Um, does that here, I can, let's see, I can put it in the chat maybe, or I don't know, let's see, if I have it pulled up. Definitely, and I can add this uh, to the website as well and uh, we can let it come out as well. All right, here we go. Sample code, just so we have another. Feel free to use it. Um, I made this only for hackathon workshops. So feel free to copy it, change whatever you want, make it your own. I should have put an MIT license on it, but I forgot in the readme. Um, feel, yeah, feel free to use it. Um, cool. So I have a couple more slides and then I will be officially done and ready for questions. So. I'm going to re, oh, sorry team, I'm struggling. How do I make this? I have too many windows open, oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. Great. So quickly, um, I know I covered a lot of new concepts and a lot of these are probably a little bit advanced, um, but I've made a list of vocab. If any of you are looking to, um, are curious about one part and you're like, I kind of remember that, but I'm not sure what it was. I'm gonna look it up later. Um, I've made a list here of different concepts that you could jot down if you're if you're into that and you wanna do a little more research on your own. So we have web frameworks, Python virtual environments, package managers like PIP, APIs, which I mentioned a couple of times, I didn't really talk about them that much, but very interesting. 
API routing, again, talk, just touched on a tiny bit, um, but that's how we decide where, what URL is going to lead to what page in your application. Localhost, which is another name for that 127.0.0.1, and CRUD operation. So I actually don't think I mentioned this the whole time, but another interesting concept if you're inter if you're curious and want to read a little bit more about um, programming concepts. All right. So say you're sitting here and you're like, what now? You know, that was kind of cool, but I don't know what to do for my project. Like, how could I use this code to make something cool? So I have a couple of ideas to help you get started on like thinking about what that might look like. Some ideas, if you're more on the um, beginner end here, you, you could add more pages to that sample Flask app. Maybe you want to add a page for cats, right? We only had dogs There's, or a, a page for birds. Another idea is that you could implement these other CRUD operations. So revisiting that word really quickly, um, CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. And those are all of the operations that you might do to an entity um, in our domain, which in this case is the animal shelter. So think of it as like a dog. You can create a dog, which we already did. We, you could see on our website, we have that form to create a dog. We have the ability to read a dog, which is to see that info about it on the screen, but we don't have the, any way to update a dog. Like what if the dog changes its name or has a birthday and we need to update the age? Um, and same with delete, there's no way to delete a dog once it's adopted. So those are some ideas of things you could add if you're looking. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience, but I know we're probably used to pets at this point in the pandemic. Okay, cool. Um, and then a little more like intermediate advanced ideas you could, if you like, if you're looking for more advanced things, you could connect your Flask app to a database. You could use an external API, like the, there's a pet finder API, which is free. If you wanted to plug in real animal data into that Flask application, you could do that. Um, or Twitter, Twitter's always fun. You could tweet about your animal of the day and help spread the word, help these animals get adopted. There's lots of ways you could do that. Um, and then finally, you could host your Flask application, making it live on the internet. So the application that I showed you today, when, it, when I run it, it only appears on my browser, right? Like other people in other parts of the world can't type in 127001 and see my animal shelter app. There's more steps that you need to take to make it live on the internet. So that's another thing you could try to do, like figure out how to make, how to host that it's called and make it live on the internet for everyone to see. Whew, okay, um, great. So this is, I think my last slide, feel free to reach out. Um, I'd love to connect with everyone. Um, that's my Twitter handle, Madeline Codes, and then my LinkedIn. I don't know if anyone here has LinkedIn, but it's always good to connect with people that you meet um, to be able to ask questions or like network for the future jobs and things. And then as one final thought, um, make sure to connect with other people that you meet at Hack the Lib. Um, I went to a couple hackathons as a student and I was able to like stay in touch with some other um, students who are interested in tech that I met there. And it's really cool to have that that like circle now. Um, we don't work in the same companies. We're not even in the same city, but it's nice to know those other people and like maintain those relationships. So that could be fellow hackers, sponsors. So I know there's a lot of companies that might be present one way or another virtually, um, mentors and workshop leaders. So just make sure you keep those connections. Great, thank you. Um, any, I'm ready for questions for a while. I don't know, it's 2.40 now. So we will, uh, the chat is open, uh, everybody. If you would like to ask any questions, uh, Ms. Nelson went over a bunch of cool things related to Flask, a lot of things uh, and all of the resources like the GitHub repository, all of that along with this recorded uh, webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And uh, we would like to extend a thank you from our whole team, Ms. Nelson, for thank you for coming out. We're making our first workshop uh, a successful one. And uh, we, hope to, we hope to come back uh, in the future as well. So thank you so much. Ms. Nelson, really quick question. What's your cat's name? Oh, this is Kareem. Um, I actually didn't name him. I adopted him from Paws and he came with the name Kareem. And when you said his name, he already he looked at you and I was like, I can't change it if he knows <laughs> his name. 
but yeah this is kareem he's sorry he's like i don't know why he's acting like this he's he wants more attention than he usually does <laughs> you'll never have to apologize for pets yeah <laughs> that's a good that's a good policy i like that but but yeah Great. All right. So uh, thank you. And please let know, uh, Mr. Sendelback know as well. We really appreciate it. You know, he came last time and gave us a talk and uh, he, we guys, uh, Sprout Social in general, helped us a lot throughout this hackathon with judging. So we really appreciate it from all of us here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, we we're really excited at Sprout to um, help out with these kind of things. And I know Jason and Ian came back and we're like, we had a great time. We learned all these things. So um yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'm sure there are some, are there any questions? There's four attendees and four panelists. Has anyone, I can, okay. I don't wanna drag this out too long, but I feel like there probably are questions and people just might not be sure how to, how to ask them. Um, or I can just say, I did I give you my email also? I'm not sure if I did, um, but I can give you my email if you're more comfortable like emailing me a question and I can help out that way too. Does that work? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> okay, cool. I'm gonna throw that one in the chat. Oh my gosh. Hi, Kareem. <laughs> He's so lovely right now. Okay, yeah, no, that, that's totally fine. That sounds good. Um, we do have a question. Um, is Python Flask an app? Um, Python Flask itself is not an app, but it can be used to make apps. And to be clear, it's not used to make mobile apps, which I think people usually think of. When they think of app, it's used to make web apps. So like basically a website that's really dynamic that allows you to like do different things in different cases. So like Instagram is a web application. I don't know if that means it's also mobile. Does that help at all? So. How do I? Python Flask is just a framework that allows you to structure the code that you might write when building an application. Okay, Kareem, relax. Does that help? I don't know where you saw the question. I didn't see the question. Oh, it was in the Q and A. Oh, am I looking in the wrong? Oh, I'm looking in the chat. Oh. Oh no 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 problem. There was uh there was only one question and it just popped up. Sweet. Well, thanks for asking. That was really brave. Hopefully that helped clarify. All of these concepts are hard to grasp if you haven't like played around in them a little bit before, because they're all just these other, you know, words floating around that are abstract until you get like a little bit of concrete experience. So, oh my gosh. Okay. Kareem's going nuts. All right. I think I should probably head out and like feed this cat or something. Um, but thank you for having me. This was great. Yep. Hopefully this helpful. You. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. Talk to you all later. Good all luck right. at the hackathon. Thanks, everybody, for uh, attending.